Alright, very weird recording place. Uh, we're in the middle of Bryant Park in New York City. Uh, the bus came way too early, but with that being said, I got the hub here. What's uh, up, y'all? Can y'all hear me? Yes. We'll see in the video editing that Alex will take care of. Uh, yeah, we'll see. I'm going to try and speak a little bit. The mic is clipped right here on my shirt. Uh, hopefully you guys are hearing us good and clear. Not too much background now, it's I guess except for traffic and just people, so yeah. Yeah, I think it'll all be fine and well, but obviously we went to Giants training camp today. Uh, gonna do a little video here recapping what we saw, going over some takeaways, and uh, Kush, this is your first training camp ever. How was the experience for you? First ever, the, the thing that comes to mind is just weather because right now I'm sweating more than I was in New Jersey. I don't know if that's just my body transitioning from AC to hotness, but I was glad to see there was a little bit of breeze. It was a little bit of breeze there. That's the first thing that struck me. And it was also a bit shorter than I expected. I, I don't know why I thought it would be a bit longer. Um, ended, what, it started at like 10 o'clock, ended 10 at 12, like a bit, pretty solid two hours. Thought it might have been a bit longer. Um, and we had pretty good seats as well. Um, I thought it would have been a, a bit more of a hassle finding seats because uh, uh, yourself and then another Giants fan we kind of met up with there were talking about how they switch fields and I wasn't aware of that. But we luckily got some good seats. Yeah. Um, so one of the first talking points I want to discuss in this video is uh, I think they need to call sacks more. The defensive ends and the defensive linemen were way were in the backfield way too much today. Um, you know, that's obviously a positive sign for, you know, guys trying to make the roster like Tamon Fox, Carter Coughlin, uh, guys like Ellison Smith. But also it's not good in terms of two things. Edge rushers getting their hands on the quarterback, which they did a couple of times and Brian Dable was pissed. And also the depth at the offensive line position, that's a little bit of a concern there. So, you know, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, it's I'm right there with you. I'm not sure if I should feel happy for the guys on the defensive line and outside linebackers or if I should be worried about the depth on the offensive line. I'm going to be honest, I didn't know Brian Dayball was a little bit angry. He was getting a little bit loud, apparently, with the uh, the guy, the edge rushers. We'll just call the edge rushers for sake of saving words. Um, I, I, it was in the middle of the practice. I saw, I think, Dan Duggan tweeted out. Shout out to Dan Duggan. Um, that he was getting angry, they were getting a little bit close. But, guys, keep in mind, what, what I saw, at least, was that it was the second and third team line. The first team offensive line was pretty good. They were pretty damn strong today. Andrew Thomas was holding his own. Evan Neal was holding his own. Even the inside, we had Ben Bredesen at center. He was doing an all right job. It was that immediately as the first team step off, Alex, you just saw such a drop in the second. And then it was a drop again when you got to the third team offensive line. Yeah, um, depth is going to be a key thing for this offensive line. Obviously, Joe Shane brought in a couple of new names. Um, also, just for offensive line notes, Ben Bredesen was getting some snaps at center and uh, Zudu at left tackle for the second team, Matt Gano right guard for the third team, and also right tackle for the second team. So with injuries and a lot of other things, they're going to be moving people around. Um, obviously, we haven't made the distinction yet between the defense and the offense who won today. Um, but what are your thoughts on the wide receivers and the DBs play? Uh, I thought Aaron Robinson stood out a little bit. Uh, some of the guys trying to make the roster, like Colin Johnson and Austin Perel, I thought they stood out, and Keelan Doss as well. I thought they had a really good day, and I think the offense had a good day in general. But uh, talk about the wide receivers and the DBs, in your opinion. Yeah, so that was kind of like the first main drill that we saw after stretching was one-on-ones, wide receivers versus defensive backs. I feel like, generally speaking, I would say the wide receivers took the day overall, both in the one-on-one -on -one drills and then even when we get some more to team drills. I feel like the wide receivers got the better defense. Um, but there's a little caveat to that. It goes back to what Alex was saying. There was a lot of sacks that should have been called that if they were called, those throws are not even made and the wide receivers are not making those catches. So there is that caveat. But then even though the wide receivers, generally speaking, won the day, their standouts, like uh, you were saying, Alex, Robinson definitely stood out, but Adoree Jackson to me as well, um, which is a good thing because obviously we're all worried about uh, what that cornerback spot is going to look like now that there is no James Bradbury there, especially in the second half of practice where Adoree had two picks. Um, I believe both of them were during the 11-on-11 drills, though. So that's why I said, generally speaking, wide receivers, but you got, you got a couple standouts there. Yeah, Dory with two picks today, both on quarterback Daniel Jones. Uh, obviously, talk about those wide receivers. Now to quarterback play. Um, I know. Obviously oh, I'm sorry to cut you off. Didn't mean to, but one wide receiver did go down during Robert practice. Robert Foster, yes. Yeah, wish he, him well, man. He uh, looked to be trying to make a play on a Tyrod Taylor pass. Was knocked to the ground and uh, very slow to get up. They yep. 
took him a while for him to get up. I, I hope he's good because he, he laid out for it. And I always like wide receivers that lay out for it, man. They're trying their best to get on this roster. Yeah, and Robert Foster necessarily hasn't stuck to a roster, which is a problem. But uh, going to the quarterback play, which has been a concern for many people, many Giants fans, especially after yesterday's practice, um, I thought Daniel Jones did well today, other than maybe four passes uh, through one that was weird and into double coverage. He also threw one away, and then the two interceptions with Dory Jackson. But also Tyrod Taylor, I don't think he was better than Daniel Jones today because he did throw one into triple coverage. Um, I just thought, obviously, along with the uh, the offensive lines, that the, the play in, in both offenses, second and third team, dropped after you saw the first team. Uh, your thoughts on the quarterback play? Um, I'm right there, which I'm glad you brought up um, to Rod Taylor because I am a fan of him. I like the signing a lot. I think that he could be one of the best backup quarterbacks. And at his height, he uh, could be, you know, a low-end starter for us. But, yeah, Daniel Jones started out strong. I think he actually started out 9 for 9. I might be a little wrong on that. I don't know the numbers exactly, but he didn't really have an incompletion until well into the practice. Had a nice zip on the ball. Um, looked good. It wasn't anything too spectacular. You know, I, I saw uh, somebody say that he was tearing it up at camp. I wouldn't define it as that, but it was a good day. Towards the end, of course, like we were mentioning with the two Adori interceptions. Um, and then with Tarad, yeah, I... I don't know if I could blame the quarterbacks here like you were saying and even with Davis Webb or if do I put it on the offensive line where it's like the drop of the offense overall I mean the um, performance of the offense overall just dropped uh, Terod had a lot of balls that looked like they came out slow and underthrown the one you were, you mentioned into triple coverage uh, Davis Webb you know at one point I think they were starting we were at one side of the end zone they started on the other side and for I can't remember if it was the second or third team at this point differentiation doesn't matter because they were struggling just to get to midfield and the the that defense that was playing opposite of them completely dominated so once again just offensive depth keep my eye on it yeah definitely um also another offensive line note marcus mckee then the rookie out of unc was playing a little bit of right tackle so a lot of guys moving uh all over the place and i thought it was a really good day for the edge rushers obviously as mentioned so guys that need to make the roster like o'shea and nico lalo's Good day for them overall. Um, uh, er Ellerson Smith and Quincy Roche, going back to when we were saying there's a lot of sacks that weren't called that should have been called, they got a couple of them. I was happy to see Quincy get in the backfield multiple times, same with Ellerson. Yeah, and Quincy Roche has kind of been buried on that depth chart behind Jihad Ward, behind Cave Montevideo, behind O'Shane Zimenez. Um, but overall, final thoughts, my man, and who won today, the offense or defense? So final thoughts, just to add in something, um, we did not see any Kenny Galladay, I would say, except for like just Maybe the, the general stretches. Drive. Yeah, the very first thing. I'm not sure what's going on there. I don't want to be, you know, some type of yellow journalism type reporter and say, oh my God, Kenny Galladay is getting traded or whatnot. But he was noticeably missing. Maybe it's a rest day, we'll see. Kadarius Tony was involved a little bit more, but he also like, they kind of rested him after a while. Of those like, first three receivers that you could think of Wandale was the one that got most of the time and it was a lot of Richie James who's the guy you mentioned as we walked in as well Richie James had a good day Colin Johnson had a good day a lot of those guys even Darius Slayton let's give uh, you know some credit to Darius Slayton he actually mossed a guy a couple of times so they, those guys had a pretty good day in terms of who won that's a good question I because I might actually give it as a tie because it goes back to, I saw a lot of great completions. I saw the, the wide receivers making moves. They kind of sauced up the DBs at a couple of points, make them, you know, miss. But at the same time, I'm seeing these defensive linemen and edge rushers get in the backfield and the sacks are just not being called for whatever reason. So I might say it's a tie. Maybe even I lead towards the defense because once again, if we're in a real game, they're the ones getting the sacks or the pressures or, you know, the hurries and whatnot. Yeah, for the first team, I'm going to go ahead and say the offense was a little bit better. Um, Daniel Jones wasn't pressured as much as the other days. They had Ben Bredes in its center, who's probably better than Jamil Douglas. Uh, as for the other two teams, that's going to lead me over towards the defense. Uh, too many times was Tyron Taylor and Davis Webb pressured, and you know it's going to happen with these guys competing for spots. However, uh, the offensive line needs to do a better job, and overall, just the depth because we got Max Garcia, Jamil Douglas, these guys that Joe Shane brought in, and they're not necessarily performing. Now, it's only camp. We haven't gotten to preseason games yet. So, um, you know, it's going to be very interesting to watch over the next few weeks here in camp. But um, I appreciate the hub for joining me in this video. We're recording it off his phone because, of course, my uh, phone couldn't fit. 
with the jack and all that stuff. We appreciate you guys. And uh, unfortunately, we won't have any training camp clips after that because they wouldn't let us record. Appreciate yeah. you guys, and we'll see you next time. Peace.